Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Live at 555 this morning. Uh, it was good to see you on this Friday morning. Uh, we're going to be starting James chapter 4 today. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to James chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 1 through 6 um, as we continue looking at the epistle of James. James chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. James says this, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desire for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have, you murder and covet and cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may uh, spend it on your pleasure. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Verse 5, or do we think that uh, the scriptures say in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace. Therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. As James starts here in chapter 4, verse 1, he asks us a question, an interesting question to ask us this Friday morning. He says, where do wars and fights come from among you? You know, sometimes in our life, don't forget who James is writing to, he's writing to Christians. Sometimes in our life as Christians, we fight amongst each other. We war amongst each other. And James asked this question to try to get us thinking, where does that come from? How come we as children of God uh, fight and war with each other? He gives us the answer. Thank goodness. Verse uh, 1 of chapter 4. He, he, he gives us the answer in asking another question. He says, do they not come from your desire for pleasure that war in your members? The fighting, the warring that is happening amongst us, because sometimes we fight with each other, sometimes we war against each other. He says it comes from our desire, our pleasure for stuff. It comes from our uh, problem of covetousness, as he'll say in verse 2. You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and you cannot obtain. You fight and you war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. He says, it's a jealousy issue. We can look at each other's lives and sometimes we fight in war with each other because uh, we, we covet, but we're not able to have what so-and-so has, or we lust after what someone else has and we're not able to obtain it. So the problem when it comes to us fighting and warring with one another, James kind of boils it down. He says, a lot of times, he says, it's jealousy. Because you're desiring something that someone else has, yet you desire it as much as you want, you're not able to obtain it. He says, instead, verse, uh, end of verse number two, you fight and you war, yet you do not have. Why? Because you do not ask. Instead of looking at what other people have and what you don't have and allowing it to create a spirit of jealousy in your heart, which then leads to fighting and warring amongst each other, he says, how about instead you go to your father in heaven and you ask him and see if that's something that he would actually give to you. See if that's something he would have for your life. Instead of looking at someone else's life and envy, ask, go to your father and say, well, Lord, so-and-so has this. Would that be something that would be good for me? He'll either say, you know what? Yeah. Or he'll say, nope, this wouldn't be a good thing for you. And here's why. James goes on to say in verse three, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasure. Well, James, you're saying the reason I don't have is because I'm not asking. Well, I am asking, James. I am praying to God, and I still don't have it. Explain that. James goes, well, here's the reason why. Yeah, you might be asking God for this stuff, but God's still not giving it to you. Why? Because you're asking amiss. You're asking for selfish reasons. You're not asking for the right motive. You want it just to make yourself feel better, to better your own agenda. And God says, I'll give it to you if it fits into my will and my plan for your life, but, but I, I'm not just going to give it to you. 
if you have the wrong motive about it, if you're asking for the wrong reason, if you're asking for your own pleasure. Verse 4, he then uses some harsh words here. He says, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know, this is an important verse, that friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. In the context of asking for stuff, okay, God, I want this thing. God says, no. Why? Because we're asking a miss. And then he says, here's the deal. The problem is that we get confused. He says, friendship, allegiance to the world, actually makes you an enemy to God. Because the world's system and the Lord's system are kind of contrary. They're opposite. So he says, you can't be buddy buddies with the world and want to be buddy buddies with the Lord. Those two don't work together. So he says, you kind of have to choose one. You can't be a, a, a best friend with the world and be best friends with the Lord. Verse 5, or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us your yearns jealousy? Don't you realize that And throughout the Old Testament we see this taught that our God, he's jealous for us. Now when we think of the word jealousy, we think of like a, a middle school teenage girl who's jealous, right? And that's not how God is. God is jealous for us, but not in that sense. In the sense that he wants all of us. He wants our allegiance. He wants our entire lives. And James says, don't you realize that the spirit of God that dwells in you is yearning for you in jealousy. That the spirit of God that dwells in us as believers wants our whole life, wants our whole heart. And sometimes we fall into the trap of wanting to be friends with this world system and not friends with God. And as a result of that, it creates jealousy in the heart of the Spirit of God that dwells in us, not because, here's why, because he sees what's, he sees the road we're walking down, and, and it's hard for him to watch. Maybe you've had this in your own life with, with kids, or with friends, or with loved ones. You can see what's ahead if they continue on the road that they're going down, and you're just like, oh, this is not a good direction. And it creates just this heartache in you because you know what's in their future if they continue going down this bad path. That's how it works for us and God too. When God sees us buddying up with the world, instead of being friends with him, it's like, ooh, I don't really, uh, it just breaks my heart, Hagen, that you would go down that path because God knows what awaits us if we continue down that road. He knows the heartache that's going to be there if we make that compromise. He, he, he knows what's around the corner if we continue ignoring him and being friends with the world and not friends with him. So in verse six, this is a great verse for us to end on this morning. But, 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 in contrast, he, God, gives more Grace. Ah, how much grace do I want more? <laughs> That's how much grace I want. I want as much as I can have. God understands. God sees us. God knows that we are messed up. God knows that we're lusting for stuff we cannot obtain, that we compare ourselves with the Joneses, that we just wish we could get that one more thing. But sometimes with that, it creates a heart of discontentment in us. And before we know it, there's war and fights raging among us. And God doesn't like it when his kids don't get along. So he says, instead, you should come to me and ask for stuff. But don't think that just because you come to me and ask means you're going to get it. Because what is your motive? If you're asking amiss, if you're asking for your own pleasure, God says, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hand it over to you. Don't you understand that this world system and the Lord system work against each other? And then he says, but here's the good news, but he gives more grace. Uh, God gives more grace to us. The rest of verse number six, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Ah, God is a gracious God. God wants to give us grace, but here's how it works in God's kingdom. 
God resists the crowd, the, the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I don't know about you, but I want as much grace as the Lord wants to give me. So, if that be the case, James tells us the key here in James chapter 4, verse number 6. It happens when we resist our prideful nature because God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. God wants us to be humble before his sight. You see, God can work with humility, but there's not a whole lot of room for pride in the kingdom of God. God's not really going to use a prideful person because that person, they think they have it all together. They think they don't need help. They think they don't need to go to their father and ask for wisdom, for whatever. They think, I got this. I don't need to ask for help. And God goes, okay, if you think you can do this on your own, go ahead and give it a try. On the other hand, to anyone who's willing to come to him and say, Lord, I I'm in trouble. Lord, I need help. God, I am just humbly before you. God says, ah, that's a life, that's a heart that I can work with. And he'll pour out grace upon us. Grace upon grace. The Bible talks about in the book of Romans. Great, or, or actually in the book of John. Pardon me. In the Gospel of John. There's grace upon grace. And he gives out even more grace to those who are humble in his sight. God is just looking for a humble, humble person to come before him. And God will use that person greatly for his kingdom. If we will just come to him and say, Lord, I know that I messed up. I know that I get my priorities wrong sometimes. I know that um, I, I, Lord, I know that I'm just a mess up. But God, I'm coming before you, and I realize that you are in control, that you know what's best for my life, and I'm just here. And Lord, however you want to use me, I'm here for your glory and for your kingdom. And he says, perfect, perfect, perfect. He says, I can work with that attitude. I can work with that life. Not the person who comes to God and say, well, here's what we're going to do, Lord. And we start barking orders at the Lord. You see, prayer is not... Uh, barking orders at the Lord. It's receiving orders from the Lord. It's reporting for duty. When we come to God, when we come before God in prayer, it's not to give God orders. It's to report to God for duty. And he says, okay, now that you've come to me to talk with me and to hear from me, I'm going to give you your orders. I'm going to send you out today for your duty, for your job. Hey, hey, God, right? Well, we got it, General. That, that, that's the mindset. We don't come to God and boss him around. No, we come to him so that we can receive our orders for the day. And he lets us know kind of the things that he wants us to be doing. So he just sums it up. God resists the proud. God doesn't want a prideful spirit, but he gives grace to the humble. Over and over again, God, winds, or God warns against pride. He says, uh, um, Pride goes before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. And uh, he doesn't want his kids being prideful. So today, let's pray that God would allow us to continue to stay humble. And when we are struggling with issues of pridefulness, that God would just deal with that in our lives because God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Let's pray on this Friday morning. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for today. God, we thank you for your word. And God, I pray that we wouldn't be fighting amongst each other. But Lord, if it does happen, you've laid for us, you've laid out for us, Lord, why that happens. And Lord, the reason is because of envy and jealousy. So God, I pray that we wouldn't be jealous with each other. But God, if there's something in our lives that we feel like we need, that we would come to you and ask. And Lord, if we're not receiving it, Lord, it's because we're asking amiss. It's because we wouldn't use it uh, for your glory, God. We would use it for our own pleasure. So God, help us just be content in the things that you've blessed us with in this life. And God, I pray that we today would not be prideful, but God, that we would just be humble in the sight of God. Lord, that we would be humble in your eyes. And Lord, we know that as we come before you with a humble heart, with a broken heart, Lord, that you are going to be there to give us not just grace, but to give us more grace. Lord, we want that in our lives. So God, help us be humble today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I hope you guys have a great Friday. We are not going to um, do our Zoom group tonight because I'm actually going to be, I got to run down to Idaho Falls today for a meeting and I will um, not be back in time for that. So we're not going to do our Zoom group tonight. 
on Friday nights like we've been doing. Um, but uh, we're planning on doing it next Friday night, but I'll keep you guys updated on that. James chapter 4, this first section, good stuff. He resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. He wants to give us even more grace. All we simply have to do is come before him today and say, God, here I am. I'm at your feet. In my brokenness, Lord, you make me complete. That's a song, by the way. Here I am at your feet and my brokenness complete. God makes us complete when we come before him broken, just humbly before the throne of God. So hope you guys have a great Friday. We'll see you uh, tomorrow morning live at 555 as we continue through the book of James. Hope to see you guys on church on uh, Sunday. We're going to be looking at the first part of James, of uh, Matthew. Let me think about what book we're in. Matthew chapter 8. As we're now done with the Sermon on the Mount, we're going to see Jesus do some miracles and talk about our miracle-working God. So have a blessed day, and uh, we'll see you later.